You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. As I've tried to show you in a previous 5-Minute Bible, what the Bible doesn't say is often quite important, sometimes more important than what it does. This is especially true in Biblical narratives. And it's particularly true when things happen by chance. Take just a couple of examples. Early in the story of Joseph, after he's described those dreams to his brothers and his father and mother, those dreams that offend the brothers so much, in Genesis 37 verse 12 we read, Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock near Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, and see if it's well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring back word to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. And the man asked him, What are you seeking? I'm seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They've gone away, for I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. What's strange about that, you say? Well, doesn't it strike you as odd that while Joseph is wandering, lost and at a loose end, in the fields near Shechem, he happens upon just the one man who happened to be around when Joseph's brothers happened to be discussing their next move, and this man happens somehow to recognize Joseph as one of the brothers of the brothers who've moved? Lots of happens there. Or turn to chapter 2 of Ruth. You know how the story goes. Ruth and Naomi have arrived in Bethlehem. Two widows with no children. Verse 1. Now Naomi had a kinsman on her husband's side, a prominent rich man of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. Our ears prick up. We hear wedding bells faintly in the distance. Verse 2. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain behind someone in whose sight I may find favour. So she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she went. She came and gleaned in the field behind the reapers. As it happened, she came on the part of the field belonging to Boaz. Yeah, right. As it happened, quite by chance. No one had a hand in that, did they? You see what I mean? Two examples of unlikely things happening. So how do we read these stories? How do we hear what we're told? Either there is an awful lot of chance going on in Bible stories, or we're meant to hear something different. We're meant to hear God's providence at work. Turn back to Genesis chapter 37 and Maybe you can see why I'm in favour of the providence explanation. Or rather, don't turn to chapter 37. Miss the story of Judah and Tamar in chapter 38. And look at the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife in 39. How many times in that story do you read things like, The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. He was the master of... The Lord was with Joseph. Yeah, you get the message. It's not chance that Joseph is successful. Joseph is successful because the Lord is with him. So, what about that stranger who gave him directions from Shechem? What do you think? After all, that's the way Bible stories work. We're supposed to think. And that'll be the topic of perhaps my next five-minute Bible. See you then. Bye.